Okay, are we ready to absolutely set our glutes on fire? You're gonna love this one. In today's video, I'm gonna run through five of my must-do exercises to help grow your glutes and your hamstring. Now, I want you to always remember something. If you want to grow muscle and if you wanna grow your glutes or a specific area in your body, number one, what you eat is so important and is so vital. The amount of protein, fats, carbohydrates is absolutely essential. Number two, you need to be focusing on progressive overload. This doesn't just mean adding more weight to the barbell. This also means intensity, supersets, volume, and actually spend a little bit longer in the gym if you need to. It also means consistency in your exercises. Now, I did this video years ago and I absolutely loved it. But since then, I've kind of changed my opinion on what my top five exercises are and also perfected my form a little bit more. So it's only right I go through them with you. I can't stress enough that you must, you must be doing exercises consistently enough to see results. That's why on the Strong Program, on the Toner Sculpt App, which is by far my favorite program I've ever written in my life, you are going to have your foundational compound moves and then the only thing that changes is your accessories, your unilateral moves, your burners, but fundamentally your compounds stay the same. Also, right, we need to discuss the elephant in the room. I'm testing a new fabric for Honor Active. I've been testing this new fabric now for about four months and I forgot I had these on when I'm doing this YouTube video, but it is what it is. Don't watch the colors, don't watch the, the fit. Everything is wrong. I'm just testing the fabric, the opaqueness, if it's squat proof, if it's stretchy enough. So you're gonna be trying it with me too. So without further ado, exercise one. Exercise number one is your Romanian deadlift, stiff leg deadlift, you know, that kind of deadlift. So I used to be such a big lover of sumo deadlift and I still am, don't get me wrong. However, because I'm trying to optimize growth in my hamstrings, trying to isolate them, trying to grow my glutes a little bit more, I feel like a more substantial type of deadlift is not conventional, it's not sumo, but it's actually more Romanian slash stiff leg deadlift. So you can do it with your dumbbells and you can do it with a barbell. I'm gonna show you how to do both of them. I find that with barbell, it can be a little bit, I don't know, I lose a bit of balance. So if you lose a bit of balance, if you find it too intimidating, then stick to dumbbells. But I'm gonna show you how to do both. So what you need to be doing is keeping your feet about shoulder width apart. What I like to do is slightly externally rotate my feet outward so they're not completely in front of me. Just a little slight rotation. My knees are gonna have a slight softness to them. Never lock your knees completely out. You wanna keep your core nice and controlled. So watch this. When you're doing your deadlift, the first thing you need to be doing is breathe in and push, just like so. That's you contracting your core and scooping your coccyx bone in, and that's how you also protect your spine. With your hand placement, you're gonna grab your hands. You wanna position your barbell right on, on top of your thumb. That's where you wanna position it. You wanna grab it here, position, grip, just like so. You don't want your hand placement too far out. You don't want it too in. You actually want it to be parallel to your shins. That's what I would personally say. When lifting the barbell, you wanna bend your knees. Protect that back always by bending your, your knees. Lifting the weight up, retracting your shoulders back. This is your starting position. Remember what I said, breathe out. Push your core in, retract your shoulders back keeping that chin nice and close to your chest. You're gonna hinge back, bring in the barbell close. You're gonna stop and bring it back up. So let's go through that one more time. Your chin is gonna be nicely tucked into your chest. You're gonna breathe out. You're gonna bring your coccyx bone in. Your hands are gonna be parallel to your shins. You're gonna push and hinge at the hips as if someone is pulling you back at the hips with a resistance band. Imagine someone is pulling you back. Another tip that literally changed completely how I do my deadlifts. Imagine someone is also pulling you at your heels. They're pulling you back. So you wanna dig those heels completely back. This will enable you to, to stretch your hamstring and also avoid putting so much strain in your lower back. Keeping that chin nice and tucked into your chest is gonna keep your spine nice and straight and your back flat. So 
So I'm actually going to show you from this position so you can see everything put together. Chin tucked, core tight, bend the knees, hands parallel to shins, bringing the weight up. Retract shoulders back, keeping that chin nice and tucked. Breathe out and go. Pushing back, digging your heels in and then you're going to come back up. You're not going to over hyper extend. You're going to keep everything nice and controlled. Just like so. Now that I've taught you how to do a barbell deadlift, I'm going to go into dumbbells. For anyone who doesn't have a barbell at home or you're just a little bit intimidated intimidated of it or you just simply don't like it it's fine i actually love to do dumbbell deadlifts same thing same concept you want to grab your thumb your weight should be positioned right on top of your thumb just like so that's your hook you want to hook it in and grip it instantly you're going to protect your wrist if you do that you also can grab it a little bit higher up as well whatever feels comfortable for you when grabbing the weight always bend your knees bring it back up now i personally like to keep my weights a little bit side on not completely front on a little bit side on like that i find it more comfortable and i find it easier to also glide same principle guys chin tucked shoulders retracted back core nice and tight you're going to push back just like so bring them close to your shins Bring them back up close to your shins remember someone is pulling me at the hips they are pulling my hips back in order for me to be able to stretch my hamstring Moving on to exercise number two, and this is a unilateral move. A unilateral move means a singular movement and is a split squat. I can't stress enough that it's so important to incorporate single arm and single leg movements into your training regime. It's gonna help with imbalance. It's gonna also optimize your training and they are difficult. So it's gonna add intensity. If you struggle to understand or know where to put your feet, and position yourself in a split squat, I'm gonna make it simple. You place one foot back, you wanna sit back on your bench just like so. You place your foot out, just as you would, and you come back up. That's all it takes. And you're ready to go. If you want more quad orientated, I would sit upright. If you want more glute orientated, I would actually position your foot a little bit more forward. Lean slightly forward as well, and you're gonna focus on your glutes a little bit more. For me, I like to grab one dumbbell, not two. It's up to you, but one just is a little bit more easy for me to control. Same thing, I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna launch my foot forward, just like so. I'm gonna bring my arm out for balance and I'm gonna come upright just like so. You wanna come down and sit in to your split squat. And you wanna push up with your heel, knee in alignment with your toe, you wanna launch up you never want to completely lock your knees out you want to keep a soft touch and tension coming back down and then coming back up every single rep count one two down one two up one two down one two up remember by bringing your chest slightly forward you're going to hit that glute much much more sitting upright you're going to hit that quad more one two down one, two, up, good job. The next movement is a hip thrust. I actually don't have a, don't have a pad with me, which is really scaring my hip bones right now, but try and get some form of protection. I'm actually just gonna use my hoodie for now, just to save, save my body from any bruises. But always use a barbell pad, yoga mat, whatever you have, just to position and cushion yourself. You wanna place, your shoulder blade onto the bench comfortably like so. You wanna roll your weight onto your hips and you wanna ensure that your feet are in alignment. You don't want one forward and one backwards, you wanna ensure they're in alignment. Now, the one mistake I used to make is I actually didn't have enough of my upper body on the bench. So what I would say is always come up and position yourself 
enough to where your chin and this area of your body is completely locked and it cannot move and the only movement you're doing is at your hip hinge so when you're pushing and thrusting the weight up it's simply only coming from your hip hinge just like so you don't want to be doing this there's a difference between that and coming upright locking your chin in looking forward at all time and scooping your tailbone in like an ice cream scooper just like so one two three so there's a few things i want you to consider when you're hip thrusting and this is years and years of trying out hip thrust and trying to figure out what actually works without it being so overly technical I don't think fitness needs to be so technical all the time. It can truly be simple. Depending on your height will depend on the height of the bench. Now this bench is fine for me. It works great for me. However, if it was too high over here, there's two things I would do. Number one, I would grab another weight, a plate just like so, and I would position it underneath me. This is if you only have minimal equipment at your gym or at your house. Instantly, that's gonna give me even more leverage. That means it's gonna put me in the correct position. So when I am thrusting up, just like so, I'm coming back down in the correct positioning. That's really key. Number two, where you place your feet is vital. So if you place them too far out, yes, it's gonna hit your glutes, but it could just end up being just too extended. So bringing them a little bit closer to you with a slight external rotation is gonna help you hit your glutes more. And the other thing I cannot stress enough is looking forward. Stop looking up, stop looking at the barbell, just look forward. It's gonna keep everything in alignment, it's gonna keep your core contracted at all times and it's gonna help you stay focused on the positioning that you want your body to move. That is by far one of the most important and neglected tips I can give you. Okay, moving on to exercise number four, which I have been absolutely adoring doing. You can do this with a landmine, which is the, basically a barbell hooked, and you can use the barbell here. You can use also um, a dumbbell, which I think is more universal. I love this exercise because I take my time with it, and it's all about really to me lifting as heavy as I possibly can with very controlled reps. So I try to keep my reps lower than maybe I would for split squats or depending on the movement, but I would say about 10 reps of really controlled and steady intense reps is what you need. This is the dumbbell sumo squat. I love this exercise so much. I think it's probably one of my favorite exercises that I've been incorporating more and more and more in my training rate routine. You can either do it with a superset on its own or also as a burner right at the end of your workouts. I will go through what, how you can incorporate exercises in different types of methods so it makes a bit more sense to you when you're reading a workout program, especially on the Strong program on the Tone & Sculpt app or whenever anyone is speaking about it so you're not confused and you know what they're talking about. But before then, let's go into this. The aim of the game with this movement is to have a nice wide stance. You wanna keep your core nice and contracted. You're gonna sit into the movement just like so. And you're gonna place both your hands opposite to one another. So just like that, holding the dumbbell. You're gonna sit back into your squat. Did you see that? I'm not like this. I actually sat back into my heels, into my squat. Bringing the weight up. But you see how my chest is forward, it's not upright, it's forward. I'm gonna come down really slowly, one, two, three. And then when I come back up, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes as I come back up. Your legs will start shaking even from rep one because you're taking your time. You're gonna come back down, one, two, three. Squeeze your glutes as you come back up. I think people 
underestimate when you really slow the movement down and you really pay attention to how the movement is supposed to feel. Instead of coming all the way up, just like so, and then squeezing my glutes, instead of doing that, I've started to squeeze my glutes right at the moment of me coming back up. So as I'm controlling my negatives, my positives, I've already told myself, start squeezing, start squeezing, start squeezing, start contracting, stop. You don't come all the way up, you stop. Then you go back down, controlling your negatives, sitting back onto your heels, coming back up, one, two, three, four, five, squeezing, squeezing your glutes at all times. That is exercise number four, the sumo dumbbell squat. Okay. The last exercise, which I know you're gonna love, and I know a lot of you have been trialing it because I actually put it on my Instagram doing this exercise with a barbell, and so many of you tried it and you loved it. This is the single leg deadlift. I love this exercise so much, and every single time I do it, my glutes are literally screaming for help. They're like, what is going on? I wasn't prepared for this, Chrissy, what is going on? And I'm like, chill sis, if you wanna grow, you gotta feel some sort of pain. It's as simple as that. So this is how I do this exercise. And if there's one thing I want you to try from this entire YouTube is this exercise. And I'm actually going to incorporate this into a new program. Have a good day. I'm gonna actually incorporate this exercise in a brand new program launching on the Tony Sculpt app and go back to the strong program and start incorporating this into our hamstring and glute workouts because I love it that much. Here's what you're gonna be doing. You want, your stance needs to be one foot forward and one bent. The one that is bent is the one that is not working. The one that is forward and has more straightness to it is the one that you are going to be working. So the one that is bent you're not gonna hold the dumbbell close to this leg. You're gonna hold the dumbbell close to the leg that's in front of you. You're gonna isolate this hamstring completely by bending this leg. You're gonna come back up. You're never gonna over hyperextend. You're gonna control each rep. Oh my gosh, I already feel it. And then you're gonna pull it back up. Imagine your arms should really be like, like cooked spaghetti. It should really be loose because the whole pulling range should come from your leg. Like you're pulling the weight up with your glutes, your leg, and even a little bit of your lower back, of course. You're, you don't wanna be pulling the weight with your upper body. So keep it as loose as you possibly can, keeping that core nice and contract to keep your back straight, and pulling that weight with your hamstring, your leg, your glutes, everything. I love this exercise so much, guys. Before this video ends, I just wanna explain something really briefly that may have caused a lot of confusion to some of you. Now, progressive overload, like I said, is a number of different things. It's not just adding more weight to your training um, exercises and the exercises that you've been doing, it's also intensity, volume. It's also maybe spending a bit longer in the gym. It's different types of progression. So like I said, with the dumbbell sumo squat, you can do that exercise as a standalone and the way I would do that as a standalone is by ensuring that the weight is difficult for me to try and achieve the reps that I've allocated myself. So for example, if I'm doing 10 reps, I need to be getting to eight reps and be pushing for two more. If I'm getting to 10 reps and it's too easy and I'm going for 15 reps, then that indicates that the weight is way too light. So always remember that. But if I wanted to incorporate it as a superset, I would potentially reduce that weight to about 60% of my capability and incorporate a higher rep range and also incorporate it with another exercise. A superset are two exercises combined together that you perform one after the other with little to no rest. That progressive overload is called intensity. Or you can do it right at the end of your workouts like a burner 
Now here I would reduce my weight to about 40% and do 15 to 20 reps. This is now called progressive overload in volume. There's a different varieties of ways you can train with your favorite exercises. I hope that helped. Let me know in the comments below. Okay guys, so there you have it. My reviewed current five top booty and hamstring exercises that I absolutely adore and love and I want you to try. And I hope these tips and tricks helped you along the way. If there's one thing I want you to take from my YouTube videos is to leave knowing reassured and knowing that you're doing the best that you can and also learning something new because every single day is a brand new opportunity for you to learn. So please always take that from my YouTube videos. And if you want a gym based program and you don't know where to start, I strongly, strongly recommend to download the Toniscope app. The link is down below in my bio. The reason I'm telling you to do it is because it's 14 days free. You literally have nothing to lose and so much to gain. Go on the Strong Program, whether you're beginner, intermediate, advanced or expert, I have something for you. It's gonna change your life just like it has to all these women. I love you always and forever and thank you always for watching my YouTube videos and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed.